Howdy y'all, Christy here with Little Salty Homesteader. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if this is your first time joining me, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here, uh, everybody else. I'm also happy that you're here. Today, what I wanna talk about is actually um, seed starting. No, not seed starting. Boy, it's been a week, let me tell you. Okay, what I wanna talk about today is um, seed organization and planning your 2024 spring and summer vegetable garden. Now, um, the reason that I'm going to combine both of those into one video is because I'm just very quickly going to show you how I organize all of my seeds, um, just to give you guys another idea of how you can do so if you happen to have quite the seed collection. Um, a lot of people that I know use the 4x6 photo little plastic containers and then they fit into like a larger um, storage bin. A lot of people I know use those. I did use those until last year um, and those work great because you can just pull out that one little bin from within the larger one, take it outside with you, do whatever you need to do, bring it back in. Uh, those work great. The problem that I have with them is um, because all of the seeds are kind of stacked on top of each other, all the packets, it's really hard to tell quickly what seeds you may have. Um, and then you kind of run into the problem of possibly buying duplicates if you're not that great at keeping up with a seed inventory log, um, which I was not prior to last year. So it while it's a great system, a lot of people have a lot of success with it. It works really well for a lot of people. It did not work as well for me because um, my, the way my brain works is out of sight, out of mind. I don't see it. I don't think about it. It no longer exists to me. So because everything was kind of stacked on top of each other, anything underneath that top packet of seeds did not exist. Um, so I was buying multiples and you know spending a lot of extra money that I didn't need to spend. So last year, I changed over to um, a three ring binder method and in the three ring, <laughs> words are hard guys, in the three ring binder method, um, it's, I mean, it's a binder and then it has these sheet protectors on the inside that fit three and a half by five um, photos. There are, these sheet protectors that are specific to seed packets, but they cost substantially more. So if you want to try this method, um, it's just a lot less expensive to get the photo sheet protectors than it is to get the seed packet specific ones. And they're almost the exact same size. So um, the only issue that you may have is like these larger packets, like this one, uh, does not fit in these and then the bigger fatter seeds like beans, peas, um, peanuts, those type of things, they don't fit in this as well. I mean they do but it creates a really bulky, it, it takes up a lot of space and it's really bulky. Um, so I actually have those organized in a botanical interest box. They're just standing up in alphabetical order. Um, and I just grab them as I need them. I have my beans, peas, and cow peas all in that box, um, separated out by type and then alphabetical order. The same thing with the binders. This one is actually flowers. Um, I had them everything in one binder, but it just got to like, it looked like this and it didn't close all the way. So I put all of the flowers into one binder and then kept my food, uh, i.e. vegetables and herbs, in this other binder so it'll store flat, either vertically or horizontally. Um, so within that, uh, the flower types are, each type is in alphabetical order. So it starts with like alyssum and then it moves to um, amaranth and then it moves to calendula, cosmos, etc, etc, all the way through zinnias, then each of those types is further alphabetized. So like my calendula, um, the first one is bronze beauty, and then flashback and lemon cream, etc, alphabetized all the way through until I get to the next flower type. 
for the vegetables, I broke it up in spring and summer. Sorry, I broke it up into summer and then fall um, because I don't typically plant the same things for fall that I do in the spring. Um, so like in the fall, you typically want to grow things that grow well in cooler weather. Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all of those brassicas. Um, and because this is Texas, it gets hot here very quickly. So I don't plant those same things in the spring, usually. Um, so I just have it as summer and fall. So I can have all those hot crops together, hot weather crops, excuse me, and then those cool weather crops together. And then those are alphabetized, you know, uh, whatever. Let me just look because I can't even remember at this point. Okay, so um, the herbs are also in there as well by like what season they're going to grow best in. So I have the warmer weather stuff first, so it starts with basil and then moves to cucumber, eggplant, works its way through. Um, and then we get to uh, herbs that are like culinary and then herbs that are medicinal and then okra and then peppers, squash, tomatoes, and then it moves into the cooler weather crops, broccoli, cabbage, all the way through. Um, and then those packets are alphabetized as well within each of those sections. And to make it a little bit easier for myself, um, the things like the peppers and the tomatoes that I grow a ton of, I further break those down into subtypes. So for peppers, I have hot, super hot, and sweet. So in hot, jalapeno, serrano, cayenne, those peppers are going to be there. Super hots are like habanero, Carolina Reaper, the stuff that my husband really loves that I don't necessarily need, but he loves them, so I grow them. And then the sweets for like the bell pepper, the sweet snacking peppers. And then the tomatoes, I break down cherry, salad, slash cocktail, um, slicer, paste, beefsteak, all of those are broken out. Uh, I think that's all the categories I have for tomatoes. I hope. That sounds like a lot. Um, but everything else is those are the only ones that I have subsections for. And then uh, I just kind of file them away. Then um, because these two are organized fairly well and I do have an updated seed inventory um, which essentially is every packet of seeds I have listed with the uh, place that I got it from and then if I saved it myself or I got it from like somebody who saved it themselves then I note that as well and then the year that I received them or saved them um, and then eventually to that inventory I also want to add like a little bit of growing notes like uh, this is a purple tomato that does better earlier in the season or something to that effect it doesn't need to be a whole lot of details just something to kind of remind myself what it is so once that is organized and updated and everything is lined out the way that you like it, whether you use shoe boxes to store your seeds in, a filing cabinet, um, an old like library uh, card catalog, binders, however you want to store your seeds, once you have it organized in a way that works for you, um, it makes it a whole lot easier to go ahead and plan out your garden um, for either season, whether it's hot weather or cold weather that you're planning for. Um, and you know, I usually do a video like this every year talking about the things that I'm going to do to plan a successful garden and then life gets in the way and either I forget to update you guys on how that system worked out or life imploded completely and I didn't even step foot into the garden, which is what happened in the fall. Um, so I am essentially starting with a clean slate in the garden for the spring. Um, I have, I don't know, four brussel plant plants out there and two cabbages. Um, they're, they're not like mature or anything so I didn't harvest them. That's all that I have growing. Everything else I harvested the other day. Um, the second half of 2023 was just like crazy chaos. So. I did not get to plant out all of the things that I had initially planned on planting out. Um, I had started seeds and then I never like transplanted them. I set them outside to harden them off and that was the end of it. Uh, bugs ate them. I don't know what happened. They're gone. 
I couldn't, and, and, you know, I got so busy and overwhelmed that the garden was, like, the last thing that I was concerning myself with. Um, so I'm starting with a completely clean slate this year um, because after Tuesday, I don't think that those Brussels sprouts or cabbages are going to be alive anymore. We have a low of six degrees and some snow coming, so I think it's going to wipe out those few remaining plants that I have. So knowing that I have a completely clean slate to start with, um, and I'm not going to have to worry about like waiting for some plants to die off or like trying to figure out plant staggering and all of that. Um, I, earlier this week, was it earlier this week? It was either late last week or early this week. I sat down and I wrote out or I created my whole seed starting plan. So I am actually going to walk you guys through the tool that I used. Um, I just need to turn on the screen record here. So the tool that I'm using is called SeedTime.us. It is a website. It is not currently available as an app yet. Um, the desktop version or laptop computer version is a little bit friendlier than the mobile web browser version right now, um, but they are continuously making improvements and I've already seen a lot of features added uh, that weren't there whenever I first started using this program. Um, last year I used an app called Seed to Spoon, which was great. It allowed me to um, add photos and like create journal entries and stuff and it helped me figure out seeding dates, fertilizer, all of those things. It, it kept me updated on whenever I needed to do those. But because I grow so many different varieties of each plant that I'm growing, and I would try to keep track of each individual variety. So like for peppers, you know, I may have like 30 varieties of peppers. Um, I would try to keep track of all 30 varieties and because it was so much, the app would glitch and freeze right in the middle of me trying to update something. So I stopped using it because it was really frustrating for me. Um, people that just grow a few things probably have a lot better luck with it than I did. So I'm not knocking it all. It <laughs> the words are hard. I am not knocking it at all. Um, this was just based on my personal experience. So um, I, I took the app off of my phone and I am going to use seedtime.us from now on. Um, the way that it allows me to plan everything out was just so much easier, um, so much faster. I used to spend an entire Saturday trying to organize all of the different planting dates and which plants are going to be planted and how many of each plant. And it, it was really time consuming and kind of a pain and not really the most fun I've ever had as far as gardening is concerned. So um, seedtime.us, again, is the website. I will have it linked below for you as well so that you can check it out. They have a free version which will allow you to create your entire planting schedule. Um, and then there is a paid version with some upgraded features. And one of the features that you get with the paid version is the ability to uh, sort of create your own crops. So if you can't find it in their pretty hefty list, um, you can create your own. You can also uh, build your garden with the layout tool here. And I haven't built my garden out yet. It's just essentially looks like a sheet of graph paper. So um, in order to do that, you just use all of the tools along the left hand side. Um, let me show you the fall garden one. So that one is the one that I created for the fall. Um, this is my greenhouse and then these are the two raised beds that I had with the different fabric planters, a couple of trees here, um, my one in-ground flower bed, the green stalks, all of those things are indicated on here. Once you have it drawn out and once you've reached like a planting date for your plants on your list, you can actually drag and drop those plants into these spaces. Um, since life imploded last year, at the end of 2023, I did not actually get that far on this part of the layout. Uh, but that gives you kind of an idea of what you can do. Um, this is, this pink square here is my patio um, with the items that were on my patio. 
So let me switch back to my spring and summer garden and we're going to go to the calendar. So the way that this works is it's very uh, user friendly. You just click add crop and then um, I'm just going to pick something. Now these are some that I created, um, but you can choose Let's choose basil because I found one earlier. And we're going to go with spicy. Okay. Um, it's called spicy globe. So I'm going to finish typing it in. And then I'm just going to click create. And I think I think I have it at six weeks before frost date. So you can just adjust that. And then um, it will allow you it gives you like your transplant dates and all that so then you'll just hit schedule that's it that's it you can add literally all of your crops this way so easy so fast um, and then you'll be able to see your entire planting calendar and I know that this looks like a lot and it is a lot it's really overwhelming but um, one of I mean whenever you look at it like this one was peppers this is tomatoes it's not as overwhelming as it seems because you are allowed uh, you are able to set up different color coding and things for um, all of these different crops and um, once you have that kind of mapped out on your calendar then you can go to your task list task list and it's going to show you the stuff that is due this week so today is January 12th um, you can choose whatever date that you want. So if I want to see what I need to do next week, I'll just click on next week. And it's going to show me the stuff that I need to get started as far as seed starting goes. Um, and then uh, you just select the little circle whenever you have completed that. Now I did start two cooler weather crops and that is kohlrabi and rutabaga um, because they grow relatively quickly and um, I'm gonna put them out probably in February. So they'll have enough time to get to their harvest point before it gets too blisteringly hot. Uh, and we really like those two vegetables. So I wanted to make sure that I got some more in the ground. Um, but yeah, the task list um, also has like a task filter. I have it set just on, well, right now it's showing everything, but there isn't anything else to do as far as like the bed preparation the direct seeding, the transplanting, or any of those things yet, so it doesn't show up on here. But if we move to like, let's move to this week. This week probably looks crazy. So it's going to show the overdue stuff for that week. But then that's overdue as well. Sorry, just bear with me here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't work. Oh, that's February. Okay, so if I click into the future, I can kind of get an idea of how hectic the gardening um, schedule is going to look as far as the tasks are concerned. But if any of that stuff overwhelms you, like you don't really care to see the bed preparation stuff or the cultivating stuff or even the harvesting stuff because with the vegetable garden the harvesting dates aren't necessarily going to line up with what seed time thinks that you're going to be harvesting them. So you can take those items off and it will um, shorten your list and make it look a little less cluttered. So let me just grab it. Uncheck those really quick and then whenever you scroll down, right now it's showing the overdue things because I went into the future. Um, but you can see transplanting stuff. Um, you can see direct seeding, transplanting, etc, etc. Um, all the stuff that needs to happen in the garden for that given week. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool, pretty easy to use. Like I said, this is incredibly user friendly. Um, it also has like a journal for you to be able to enter in different garden notes. Um, I did make a, a note in here about the seed starting that I did do um, with a picture of my lovely setup here. Um, and you know, it doesn't, it can be as detailed or as simple as you want it. Uh, I left it very basic because I have my garden log, which I will get to next. Um, so. Aside from the journal, there's also 
um, classes. Some of them are free, so that's pretty cool. Free resources to learn how to garden are awesome. Community, that links to a Facebook group. And then they also have a store where you can get seeds, gardening supplies, frost covers, all kinds of stuff. Um, but that's essentially the gist of seedtime.us. It does have a lot of these features available as a free user. So click that link, check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, so for the 2024 garden log, I'm a little nuts, y'all. Um, if you don't know, I am a data analyst uh, by profession. Um, that is the career that pays the bills. Uh, but it's it's really nerdy, but it's a lot of fun. I love what I do. Um, but part of that means that I collect data for a lot of different things. Um, so um, in previous years, I did the manual version where I just wrote it out on graph paper and I would just save it in this garden journal where I keep all of my main notes and things. Um, but I wanted to update to a digital version so that I could do some different analysis, try to figure out what maybe I want to grow and don't want to grow in the future. Um, so I have a Google Sheet document here um, with a whole bunch of different tabs. Uh, the first tab is my seed starting log. Um, the information that is going in that is the type of plant that I am starting. Like you can see there, line number two says peppers dash hot. So that's my hot peppers. Um, there are some super hots in there, but for simplicity's sake, they're still hot. Um, and then the name of that pepper, so Aleppo, Big Gem, etc. Um, I'm also indicating if it's indeterminate, determinate, annual, or perennial. Now, for the sake of peppers and tomatoes, here in this part of the country, both of those are always going to be annuals because we do have killing freezes. Um, and the difference between indeterminate and determinate is um, if you get your fruit essentially all at once or if it continues throughout the season. Peppers are indeterminate, so they continue throughout the season. I also indicate how many I started. Uh, the date that I sowed them, which was two days ago, I am also trying to log the date that they sprout. Um, when I need to up pot them out of the seed starting trays into their individual planting pots, um, when I'm going to harden them off, when I transplant them and any issues I may have with those seeds or seedlings. So for example, if I have a brown jalapeno that did not sprout, I would put it in the issues column, or um, if something died after transplant, I would put it in the issues column as well. Um, there are a lot of plants that I direct so outside that I don't start inside, simply because we have a really long growing season, so um, I have time to plant the seeds in the ground and wait for them to grow outdoors. So some of those things are like okra, squash, it grows really fast. Um, a lot of flowers like zinnias, those uh, will get direct sown outside. That is where, um, so those items will be logged on the direct sow log tab of my, um, my workbook here. Uh, it has essentially the same information, what type of plant it is, so okra, and then what's, you know, the name of the okra, so Alabama red. Um, and it has the same indeterminate, determinate, annual, perennial indicator, how many seeds I am going to plant. So let me change the heading on that because it started, started it is uh, a little misleading. So the quantity sown, the date sown, so the date I put those seeds into the ground and then any issues like if they don't sprout, um, if they sprout and then wither up and die very quickly, um, something slug or something just comes and eats it off whatever the issue is that's where I'm going to write it right there then there are also some plants that I'm going to cold stratify the seeds um, I did a video on a very basic cold stratification method where you just plant put the seeds in like a wet paper towel inside a baggie and put it in your fridge um, but there's different ways to cold stratify seeds. What that means is that the seed requires a chilling period in order for it to sprout. So a lot of 
perennial flowers actually require cold stratification. And I'm trying to incorporate more perennials into my garden. Um, so that is what this tab is for, is to uh, log all of those. So like Rudbeckia, Echinacea, Gaiardia, um, I have some other ones written down. Some of the medicinal herbs also require cold stratification, so all of those will be uh, will be logged here uh, with their type, name, date, those things, um, any issues that I have with those, and then uh, the transplant date as well. And then this transplant log will be for anything for this stuff and the cold stratification stuff. To be transplanted out. So everything that I'm transplanting that made it through seed starting or cold stratification without any issues is going to be logged here and then that is where I will log any issues I had with the transplant process. Um, sometimes whenever you transplant something a slug will come along and just eat the top off of it or for whatever reason it just has like a failure to thrive and it just wilts and dies. I had a couple of tomato plants do that last year. I don't know if I broke like a, one of the main root systems or what whenever I was moving things around um, but things just happen and they don't always survive the transplant process. I am also logging any type of fertilizer or amendments I'm going to be doing to the plants. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to log the amendments to the soil. I probably should simply because I do amendments every year before I start planting things. Um, just so I can keep track of when I do that so I can pr stay pretty consistent. So I'll probably add that in here uh, uh, onto this tab as well. So instead of plant type, I'll just write raised bed or something uh, and then put whatever I'm amending. Usually my amendments include like nitrogen fertilizer, compost, um, bone meal, um, and a little bit of molasses. The molasses, the molasses helps draw the microbacteria, the good microbacteria, up to the top um, where you're going to be planting your young seedlings, uh, which will help those young seedlings get some stronger root systems. So um, that is, yeah, I think I need to include that on this tab. So I'm glad I'm having this discussion with myself. I mean, you guys out in YouTube land. <laughs> Uh, so the next tab is the harvest log, and this is where I'm going to try to keep track of how much food I'm actually bringing in from the garden. So the type, uh, so if it's cherry tomatoes, uh, the name of the cherry tomatoes, so like rosella, um, the date that I harvest it, and then the harvest amount is going to be by weight. So if I harvest seven pounds of cherry tomatoes, first of all, that's a lot of cherry tomatoes, um, but if I harvest 42 pounds of beefsteak tomatoes, that's a lofty goal. Let's, let's shoot for 10 pounds. <laughs> let's shoot for 10 pounds in 2024. Uh, and then any issues that I have with the harvest, like maybe I had to harvest early because of a pest issue, or um, I'm harvesting a little later than normal because of whatever, harvest early because of a storm, whatever issues I may have that may cause the reason for harvesting to not be prime optimal fruit. So um, this is where I'm going to log any sort of pest issues like spider mites, uh, squash bugs, hornworms, um, aphids. Woo! Aphids is a big one. I don't know why I forgot that one. Um, and then, you know, last year the biggest issue that I had as far as my tomatoes was actually rats. So if that is an issue this year, I want to put that down um, and how I treat any of those pests or problems like that. Um, any type of plant diseases will also be in this log. So if uh, I end up with blight on my tomatoes, which is common here in this part of Texas because it is so humid, um, I need to log which plants that happened to um, whenever I first noticed the issue and if I was able to treat it. Um, so hopefully by forcing myself to be this data centric, um, I will be a better gardener for it next year and in the years to come. Um, and then the next one, the next tab, which is the last tab, I know you guys are probably bored to tears right now, the last tab is actually the weather log. So this is where I want to log things like um, what the low temp was, what the high temp was, any rainfall, and then um, we need to write anomalies. 
as well. So, um, the end of June last year, I think it was the end of June, there was a very bad storm with 70 mile per hour winds or higher that blew through our little town. Um, we were actually thinking that it may have been like an F1 tornado simply because of some of the destruction that was around. Um, I want to be able to record things like that so that I can look back and go, that's why all my tomatoes were on the ground um, because of that or you know whatever the case may be. Um, so that is my very lofty plan for the 2024 garden log. So um, one thing, one last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is seed starting. I'm not going to tell you how to seed start. I have a video about that already. If you, there might even be two videos. Um, there's videos out there already with seed starting information, how to 101 basics, all of that stuff. Um, it is a bit early for me to actually be starting seeds in my zip code. Um, this is peppers and kohlrabi and rutabaga. The kohlrabi and rutabaga, that's fine to start now, um, simply because they're cooler weather crops. The peppers, typically six weeks is the starting, the seed starting window, um, but I like to break the rules, um, and that's okay. So, I know that in the winter, the anticipation to get out into the garden just builds and builds and builds until you, you can barely stand it. It's so difficult to stay inside for that many days without being able to put your hands in the dirt. I totally understand. I empathize with you. I get it. Um, one of the things that helps with that is actually planning out this garden and creating this massive 2024 garden log and creating your calendar on seed time and what have you. Um, but nothing quite itches that get your hands into the soil itch like getting your hands into the soil. So my piece of, I don't want to call it advice because it is rule breaking. So the thing that I will tell you about seed starting early is if you have the space to be able to up pot possibly more than once before your plants get transplanted outdoors, then absolutely go ahead and start your seeds early. Um, keep in mind that you may see blooms on your pepper plants um, a month before it's time for them to go outside and you're going to have to pull them off because you want them to be well established in their permanent homes before they start setting fruit. Um, if you have an earlier last frost date than the average last frost date for the rest of America, I don't even know what that is. I'm in the south where it's warmer and we have an earlier last frost than other places. Um, I am in North Texas. Our average last frost is May, not May, March 18th. Um, so I plan everything around that date, understanding that it might get cold again or it might be 95. This is Texas. We don't know. Um, but it is a gamble to start your seeds earlier than what the seed packets recommend. Um, but if you have the space and the ability to keep them warm, um, these are on heat mats, or the ability to keep them under lights, the ability to keep them healthy, the space to continue to up pot them out of the seed starting trays, possibly into a two inch pot, into a solo cup and beyond. You do you, boo. Uh, it's your garden. You sometimes, you have to break the rules to know what the rules are for you. So what that means is what everybody tells you is the rules for gardening may not apply to you and your specific garden. You're going to have to do things on your own to figure out exactly what works the best for you. I start mine early because sometimes I fail. I want to give myself enough time um, if some of these seeds don't sprout to plant some more. Or if uh, they do sprout and then they wither and die, I want to give myself some time to be able to start some more um, because I have <laughs> enough to do that with. Um, do I suggest that for everybody? No, you have to do what works for you, but don't let anybody tell you that you can't because it's your garden, do what you want. Um, and with that, I hope that you 
at least got some useful information out of the seatime.us and the uh, Google Sheets garden log document that I have set up. Um, if you would like your own copy of this Google Sheets document, let me know. I'll figure out how to get you a blank one that doesn't have all my stuff already in it. Um, otherwise, now that life has returned to whatever this new weird normal is, um, I will see you guys next time. And until then, happy growing. Go figure out how to get your hands dirty. Bye!